So Michelle, what I'm understanding is that if as a therapist we're using an inhibitory learning model to understand what's happening during exposure, then we want to think about the goal of the exposure itself differently. We want to focus more on learning, what is the patient learning, and less on anxiety reduction. And so that means we need to think more carefully about how we're going to orient the patient and to the treatment and sell the patient to the tre- on the treatment. I'm hoping you can give us your thoughts about that issue. That's right. That's right. And I think it's true for clinicians as well as patients. Oh, that's a very good point. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants the fear to go away. We do. We do. The therapists <laughs> also want it to go away. Yeah, because it feels better. Um, and we don't like to see people in distress. And, and we don't want to be in distress ourselves either. Exactly. Exactly. So it's... Um, so it's very much about that functional analysis that in the case conceptualization idea that you brought up before, Jackie, it's really helping the therapist to gear themselves towards, you know, what is it that the client is needing to learn in order to, to really have long-term learning um, that persists. And then for the client, it's helping them to understand, okay, so when you, uh, let's take for example, an individual who has, um, uh, social anxiety and and what they're most concerned about is um, being rejected because they perceive if, if that they are rejected then that they won't be able to ever establish any relationships in the future because they are unlikable and, and unworthy. If the focus is upon fear reduction that might mean that they're asked to go into a social situation and um, stay there until they feel comfortable. Um, so they'll go into a social event and have, you know, try to interact with people until they feel comfortable. Their fear goes down, and then what have they learned? Okay, I can be in a situation and my fear declines. But have they learned anything about the concept of rejection? And so, not necessarily. So what, right. it, what may be more effective for that individual is to realize that I can actually experience rejection and go on and interact with another person and not be rejected. Or I can experience rejection and follow up with more social interactions that provide positive reinforcement. That, in other words, a rejection does not lead to never being in a satisfying relationship. And of course, I'm speaking, you know, this would take a lot of careful analysis on how to set this up. But what we would help the client understand is, boy, it sounds like you're fearful that by being rejected, it's going to mean that you'll never have any relationships. So wouldn't it be useful? Wouldn't it be powerful for you to learn that a rejection does not actually lead to never being in a relationship. How can we design an experience for you to learn that? How, how could we set up a, something so that you could see that a one-time rejection doesn't mean what you're thinking it means? So that's the way we try to present it to the client. 